Studio 33 AD, bringing you Catholic Media. When you hear the word church, what comes to mind? What do you think of immediately? What's the picture in your mind when you think of the word church? For some of you who are very literal-minded, which no problem there, you might think of the building. Maybe you think of this particular building. We're in a church, aren't we? We are in a church. It's a building where people worship. Some of you who are more theologically minded, maybe really like to read a lot, like to read about the church, might think of the community of Christian believers gathered together to worship. That's true as well. This, we're a church in that sense, aren't we? And some of you might think in particular of who we are, that is, the Catholic Church, a particular part of the body of Christ, which Jesus Christ himself founded and which we belong to. Very good. That's right, too. All of these are correct. But I want to suggest what might be a new image for some of you of what the church is and what we mean when we say church, when we say this word. What if instead of all of these things, the word church primarily and most intentionally points to the community of holy ones, yes, but not so much as us, as the ones gathered around God the Father in heaven. That what we experience here in in church is just a pale imitation of what's going on in that church. And that's actually what the Second Vatican Council teaches. The church, while on earth, that's us, journeys in a foreign land away from the Lord. It's in exile. It seeks and experiences those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, where the life of the church is hidden with Christ and God until it appears in glory with its spouse. So it turns out the truest sense of the word church is heaven itself, where the church will finally have become perfect. So we are the church insofar as we partake of that reality. And already that reality has begun to take shape here below. We have seen it with our very own eyes on the earth, haven't we? Some of the poor in spirit, the meek, the merciful, the peacemakers, have already been among us. After being made by a slave of Irish pirates, St. Patrick over here received a special and unique missionary call from Christ and ended up converting an entire nation of peoples to Christianity. St. Rita of Cascia, who many of you cannot see, endured an abusive marriage at first, and then after that husband died, initial rejection from religious orders as launch pads for her own sanctity. Very different than St. Patrick. St. Teresa of Avila, over in this corner, wrote some of the greatest books ever written on prayer, and she founded over 20 monasteries in her own life. Not bad for a contemplative nun. And St. Alphonsus Liguori overcame obsessive-compulsive disorder, to become one of the most, if not the most, influential moral theologian of all time. And the list goes on and on and on. There are 10,000, or at least that many, canonized Catholic saints. But it doesn't stop there. Today we celebrate the thousands, the millions, the billions maybe, of other people whose names we don't know who have joined them in the church above. Their fulfillment of the prophecy we heard from the book of Revelation, from our own St. John the Evangelist, the 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. And, put another way, the great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They are the martyrs, the monks and the nuns, the kings and the queens, the bishops, priests and deacons, the native tribesmen, the electricians, the plumbers, the housewives, the bank accountants and the software engineers, the artists and the athletes, the young children, and yes, the babies, who according to St. John the Evangelist may be called the children of God. 
All of them together are crying out, salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. And it doesn't stop there either. Truly, we believe every Mass to be the reality of heaven breaking into earth at this moment where we are now as well. And don't we too see some resemblance of heaven, some resemblance of that reality I just discussed, even here and now in our midst as well, in this congregation? Can't we see that the church above subsists in the Catholic Church in this very moment? I look around at you all, and I see those who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb through the sacrament of baptism, which most of you, if not all of you, have received. I see those who have been marked with the seal on their foreheads through the further reception, the sacrament of confirmation. I see people from many cultures, languages, and ethnicities that come together for worship in a way that transcends all of those things. I see those who are surviving the time of great distress by carrying the crosses that the Lord has allowed them to endure in this life in order to make them holy. I see those who are trying to be peacemakers in their own families, those who mourn over the sin in the world, those who are ardently striving for purity of heart. Perhaps this is why St. Paul could look at all his congregations and write letter to his congregations 2,000 years ago and address his letters to those who were the saints in the churches he was speaking with. Maybe he saw what I see here today, those who are striving above all for holiness. All of this, the mass, prayer, love for each other, overcoming our vices, it's the saint-making process. Hopefully, hopefully, it's what every single one of you are engaged in. And don't kid yourself, it is actually the hardest thing in the world to do, to overcome one's ego, one's own selfish desires, in order to have them be transubstantiated into Christ. But we remember today, and hopefully every day, the countless others have already done it, done it before us. That is what Jesus was communicating to us on the Sermon on the Mount. That is what St. John the Evangelist was speaking about in his first letter that we heard from and in his book of Revelation. So Mass, then, is the source of all that holiness that comes to us. This is the place where the veil between heaven and earth, especially at this time, is very, very thin. Where we can have fellowship with all the apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Estilia, Anastasia, and all the other saints. So we proceed then to church in the truest sense of the word. It is here that heaven will reach down to us, giving us an image, a peek at what we will be at the end of time, should we persevere. It is here on this site where we will be among the cloud of witnesses who give testimony to Christ. And it is here in this holy place where we will receive a foretaste of eternal bliss in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who continually blesses us through the intercession of all his saints. <laughs>